أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله صلاة والسلام على رسول الله so now we come to something called the maintenance cost the expenditures during the useful life this is a different category it could be two, two different types one is ordinary repairs that are small maintenance costs to keep the machine running those are expensed as repair expense, debit repair expense, and credit cash, okay? If you add something <clears throat> to the property to the equipment that increases its useful life or the addition is something extra, something big, then it is added to the value of the asset and depreciated it's added to the cost of the asset and it's depreciated so for example you have a building uh, and you put a new sink in one of the bathrooms right? a sink for washing hands add a sink into one of the bathrooms this would be repair cost but if you add Another bathroom, let's say you make build another bathroom, right? That is a large cost. It increases the value of the property and it's a large cost. It would be then added to the balance sheet and depreciated in addition to original cost of the building. Does that make sense? Right? So again, each company has to decide what amount is large and what amount is going to be expensed. It is all material. Uh, there are some guidelines, but there is flexibility as well. Okay. The next thing that can happen to your asset is impairment or permanent decline. If it becomes totally useless, right, then you remove the asset from the balance sheet and you remove the accumulated depreciation associated with it from the balance sheet. So you credit the equipment debit the accumulated depreciation it no longer stays on your balance sheet it's called permanent impairment meaning it cannot be used anymore it has no more value it is useless now you can get rid of the asset in one of three ways you can sell it you can retire it right which is getting rid of it without getting anything in exchange for it. Or you can exchange it, right? You can exchange it. And in any one of these cases, you have to debit the accumulated depreciation. You have to credit the asset, remove it, okay? Now, if you don't get anything in exchange for it, that's the end. But if you sell it and you get cash right and if the cash is more than the book value of your asset then you have gain if the cash is less than the value, then you have a loss so you can have gain on sale and you can have loss on sale right if you exchange and you have to pay cash then in addition to removing the asset you have to credit cash if you exchange and you get cash that means the value of the equipment that you're getting is less than the value of the equipment you're giving that's why you're getting cash in that case you debit the cash we're going to look at an example for all of these things that i just said so say, if the uh, amount that you get exceeds the book value, there is a gain. If the amount that you get is less than the book value, then it's a loss. So let's take a look. This company sells office furniture for 16,000. The office furniture originally cost 60,000 and the accumulated depreciation is 41,000, right? Depreciation for the first six months of 2014 is 8,000. So it was purchased uh, 
uh, I'm sorry, it was sold on July 1st. That means from January 1st to January 30th, they, uh, June 30th, they had a depreciation of 8,000. So first they're going to do, what they're going to do is they're going to record depreciation expense for those first six months. This is given to you. You don't have to calculate this. It's given 8,000. You debit expense and you credit accumulated depreciation. So now this brings us to the actual book value. So forget this bottom part, look at this top part here. The first purchase price, the initial purchase, purchase price was 60,000. The accumulated depreciation is 49,000. The 41,000 plus the 8,000. So whatever the accumulated depreciation is at the date of sale, you subtract that from the purchase price and that is your book value, 11,000, okay? You're getting 16,000, book value is 11. Is there a gain or a loss? It's gain of 5,000, right? So we have cash 16,000. So you have to remove the accumulated depreciation for 49,000, you have to debit that. You have to remove the equipment from the balance sheet, which is you have to credit it for 16,000. And then you have 5,000 gain, right? So you receive 16,000 cash, and you have 5,000 gain because the book value was 11,000. Gain, when it increases, it is credit, it is income, right? Gain is equal to income, you follow? Gain is income, it's money coming to you, extra money coming to you, right? Are you following? Does that make sense? Gain is income, loss is expense, you follow? So loss is debited, gain is credited when it increases, just like revenue is credited, okay? You don't like it, okay? <laughs> Depreciation? Depreciation what? If it's a loss, if, if they get less, so same example, the book value is 11, they're getting 9,000 cash. If that's the case, and you have a $2,000 loss, right? Losses are debited because they are money coming out of your pocket, that's an expense. Gains are credited because it's similar to income. Here. So that's sale. If you retire and no cash is received, then you just get rid of the accumulated depreciation and the book value of the asset, right? Accumulated depreciation. So here we have, I'm sorry, not the book value, the, the cost. So you have 32,000, which is the cost, and the depreciation is 32,000. Accumulated depreciation is 32,000. You get rid of the accumulated depreciation and you get rid of the equipment, okay? And you make both of those accounts zero. If they are not the same, if they are not equal, either there will be a gain disposal or there will be a loss 
on disposal, depending on which side is heavier. Right? If you have to debit, it's going to be A plus. If you have to credit, it's going to be A. Right? But it doesn't matter. I mean, this is again, this is all book for book purposes. You're just getting rid of the item because it's no longer useful. Okay, so that's the end of tangible assets. Now we come to intangible assets. Intangible assets do not have any physical substance. So you have patents, copyrights, franchise. Uh, rights, trademarks, trade names, goodwill, etc. We're going to talk about all of these individually, what they are, what they are, and exactly what they do for the company. These are on paper. This is a right. This is a right on paper. And uh, if the intangible asset has a limited life, and you amortize. This is the same concept as depreciation. We call it amortization. If it has indefinite life, then you put it on the balance sheet and you don't do anything. You don't depreciate or you don't amortize it, right? If it has indefinite life, you have the right, uh, for example, copyright. Copyright does not expire uh, during the lifetime of the author, okay? the copyright does not expire. So the copyright lasts for the life of the author plus 70 years. Okay? Right of the life of the author plus 70 years. And if the copyright belongs to a company, for example, uh, when we write articles for journals and so forth, the copyright belongs to the journal. So the journal has a life until the journal is no longer in business. So as long as they're in business, even if the author has passed away, the copyright remains with the journal. So indefinite life, right? So how do we deal with these, each one of these different types of assets? Let's look at the first one, Patents are exclusive right to manufacture, sell, or otherwise control an invention for a period of 20 years on the date of the grant. So now as soon as the coronavirus vaccine is going to be available, some company will patent it. Right? Uh, anytime a uh, new technology comes, it's patented, right? You know, there was a big case lawsuit between Apple and Samsung, you remember, right? Because the, the technology that Apple came up with, uh, it was patented and all you have to do is buy an iPhone and open and see how they did it, that's it, right? <laughs> and you can do it again. So they did that and there was a problem. So this 20 years is, is the life of the patent and you capitalize that and you amortize it over 20 years, there is no concept of salvage value in intangible assets, right? It completely goes away right? after 20 years. If you have research and development expenses, right? If you have research and development expenses, listen to me carefully, all research and development expenses are expensed. They don't go to the balance sheet. All of that is expensed. They're expensed, okay? Legal fees to defend the patent is capitalized. So if you paid a lawyer to uh, defend your patent, if somebody violated your patent and you paid lawyer and those lawyers are very expensive, so those costs are capitalized, okay? They go on the balance sheet and they're amortized over the remaining life of the patent. Example. $60,000 uh, was paid by National Labs and the useful life of the patent is eight years, right? So this particular patent is for eight years and the annual expense, amortization ex expense is going to be 7500 And if it is for half a year, so for example, this year, they started from 
part yet, which means half of the year is gone. So the amortization is going to be for half of that year. In the first year, it's going to be half of the whole years. I mean, it's, it's, this example is like that, but you understand the idea. Half year is just a twist here. It's over the life. If it's eight years, divide the whole cost with eight. That's it. There is no other, uh, there is no other method here. A straight line. Whatever the cost is, divide the number, the number of years, expense it. That's it, okay? No concept of salvage value, no concept of any other type of depreciation, only straight line. All of it is straight line. Research and development, as I mentioned, related to patent, copyrights, or a new process, new product, any type of research and development cost is expensed. They're all expensed in the income statement. They don't go to the balance sheet. That's the first type, patent. Second type is copyrights. Gives the owner the exclusive right to reproduce and sell an artistic or published work granted for the life of the creator plus 70 years. So whoever wrote that piece, article, book, whatever, it's the copyright is until the life of the author plus 70 years. If the copyright belongs to the author, if the copyright remains with the author. And this is capitalized. Any cost incurred to get the, the copyright is capitalized and it's amortized over the useful life. It's amortized over the useful life. So that's why when you write something, you have to cite, you have to cite, you have to refer to the author. You have to say that I'm saying this from such and such book. It is written in that book. It was published. The author's name is this. The, it was published in this year. You know, references, right, are given uh, to the author of the text, author of the literature, and the cost that the author paid or the company paid to, to get the copyright. It is expense. It is not amortized uh, if it has indefinite life, but if it has definite life, if the copyright expires, you can expense it over the useful life. But now prob the problem is if the copyright uh, belongs to the author, what is the useful life? Huh? You don't know how long the author is going to live, right? So again, usually, usually the copyright, what does it take to get copyright? When I published my first book back in 2006, the entire process of getting, not printing, but getting the thing published was $100, okay? Not, then, you know, the cost is as many copies you print, the cost, that is a different cost, printing cost, reprinting cost, right? But initially, to get it, to get it copyrighted, to, you know, get it uh, 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 legally registered, and $700. So, $700, you know, what's, amortize that with, for how long? It's nothing. You follow what I'm saying, right? So, usually, I mean, it's not the copyright expense, it's not that you follow. If somebody violated your copyright and you went to the court and you wanted to defend that, then you could have a large expense for a lawyer who would then defend your copyright. You follow. But usually the other party would pay you more than that to defend uh, to, if you win. You follow. And if you have a genuine copyright, you should win. You follow what I'm saying, right? Anyhow. Trademark or trade names such as Wheaties, Monopoly, Sunquist, Kleenex, Coca Cola, Big Mac, etc., etc. The trademark has uh, indefinite number of years and it's renewed every 20 years. So, this is US. In the US, it's renewed every 20 years. If you have a trademark and it is registered in the US, it's registered trademark in the US. You have to register it in every country. 
where you go to do business. Okay, you have to register it in every country. Follow, trademark is registered in every country. So you can understand it, there is some cost involved in, in registering the trademark, right? And it is legalized, but it's not advertised because it is in. As long as you're doing business, Nike, Toyota, Coca-Cola, they have been in business for years and years and years. And whatever they have to pay, you have to renew. So every 20 years, you have to pay the cost to register it, and it goes on the balance sheet. Franchise is the right to operate under the name of a particular company. So Toyota, Subway, Marriott, all of these companies, they sell franchise. So you want to buy a franchise, let's say, of Domino's Pizza, the one that you're doing. You have to pay a franchise fee, and you get the right to operate for a period of time. So if it's five years, you have to amortize that over five years. And after five years, you have to pay again, right? Then you have to amortize that over five years again. So if you have to renew after five years, you pay another amount that is amortized over the time frame for which you have the franchise right. Franchise right usually has a limited period after which you have to renew. The last one is goodwill. Goodwill is anything you pay to buy a business as a whole that is in excess of the fair market, uh, not the fair market, the book value, in excess of the uh, I was correct the first time, not book value. Book value has nothing, book value is worthless. Fair market value. In excess of the fair market value of the identifiable assets. So for example, you have a restaurant that has been in business for 10 years and the restaurant is uh, established for 10 years. Everybody knows the name. They have a uh, lot of customers that come and regularly eat there. And you're buying that restaurant. Well, the equipment is 10 years old. The furniture is 10 years old. Everything is 10 years old. It does not have a lot of value if you sell that furniture or that equipment by itself. But when you're buying the restaurant, right, if you sell the furniture and equipment by itself, you might get 50,000 riyals. But you're paying 300,000 riyals for the restaurant. Well, what you're buying is Customer relations, skilled employees, products, desirable location, uh, exceptional management. So all of those things are there. They have established it. You're paying for that. So if the actual assets are twenty thousand, worth twenty thousand, fair market value twenty thousand, you pay three hundred thousand. Then the extra is good. The extra is good. Goodwill can only be purchased. You cannot just report goodwill on your balance sheet without buying the business. Goodwill cannot be internally generated into the balance sheet. It must be purchased. The purchase price minus the fair market value of the actual physical assets is good. Okay, now we have a, well, let's do it here. here. You have slides, you already have the answers, but let's just go through them quickly. So we have The first one, it says what the uh, allocation 
to expense of the cost of an intangible asset over its useful life. It is called what? What is this? Amortization, right? The allocation of, to expense the cost of an intangible asset. You allocate the cost, amortization, intangible, okay? Rights, privileges, and competitive advantages that result from the ownership of long-lived assets that do not possess physical substance. We call them intangible assets. An exclusive right granted by the federal government to reproduce and sell an artistic or published work is called copyright, right? As long as you do that, the church can see It's when you pay. When you pay, when you pay. So, whatever you pay in here, that's it. Does that make sense? international financial reporting standards they dictate that you do that okay a right to sell certain products or services or to use certain trademark obviously this is franchise costs incurred by a company that often lead to patents or new products these costs are expend expense as incurred so whenever you have the cost you expense it whenever you have the cost pay for it it's expensed this is research and development okay. all right so oh. okay there it is now uh, this is the presentation of the balance sheet as you see property plant and equipment less the uh, accumulated depreciation this is the book value and you have the intangible assets here the intangible assets you can record accumulated amortization as a separate line or you can reduce the value of the asset itself okay you can reduce the value of the assets uh, themselves instead of recording accumulated amortization both options are okay Right. All right, so we will end this session here, inshallah.